Peace and salutations, family, and welcome to another anniversary edition of the Word from the Pastor Study. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, Senior Pastor and Founder of All Christ's Love Ministries. And I'm so thankful to God that you did not think it robbery to join me today for a word from the Lord. Amen. Uh, as you may or may not know, if you have been uh, with us along this walk, this is our anniversary month, amen, uh, the month of October. Uh, this year marks our second anniversary of being up and running. Now, I want you to know that the ministry itself has been around and has been in operation uh, since 2006. Yes. Um, however, we have moved since then. We started out in New Jersey, praise God. And uh, we are now here in Colorado. And as well, our mission has changed too during uh, my time of spiritual growth, amen. We're not the same people that we were 16 years ago, amen. Praise God. But what I'm going to ask you to do before I speak any further, I'm going to ask you to stand in the gap as I approach the throne of grace. Merciful God, again, I come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking, pray, thanking and praising you for this day, oh God, and just one more opportunity to try to do something right in your sight in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would come forth right now and move through this digital realm like a mighty rushing wind. I pray, God, that you would come forward with power and a testimony in the name of Jesus. But have your way on today, Father have your way in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now that you would sit me down and you stand up, oh God, decrease me and increase you, none of me and all of you. Instruct my mind and direct my vocal cords on what you would have me do and say before these your sheep. And transform me, Father, into the man you would have me be in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray right now, Father, that you would release upon us our hearts and minds, O oh God, your divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And let the words that come forward right now, God, not fall on deaf ears, but rather be imbued in the hearts and the minds of the listeners that we may be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray you have your way right now. Hallelujah. I pray that you would repair this, your imperfect servant, this broken vessel, O oh God, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right and steadfast spirit within it, O oh God. Fix me, God, that you may use me right now, that I may be used of you in this time that we have. For it's me, it's me, it's me who's standing in the need of prayer. As I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It is in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth I pray. And let all believers say, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm doing things a little differently right now. It's a little bit off the cuff. We're not doing regular a regular sermon per se. Um but rather I'm trying to refresh you and reintroduce myself to you or maybe I'm introducing myself to you for the first time, amen. And I want to tell you that before I prayed us in, I was speaking of how we've changed over the last 16 years. And I want to say this to you. Um, my first lesson in ministry was regarding a brick and mortar church. Back in 2006, I started shopping around looking for a church building and getting prices of them. And I tell you, you know, God was just starting to work with me. I still had a long way to go, amen. I had, my credit was still messed up bad. And I'm wondering how in the name of God 
am I going to come up with $1.4 million or something like that for a church home? And then find the people to help me to, uh, praise God, to help me keep the place, to pay that mortgage if God blessed me with it. And I got my first ministry lesson right there because the Lord spoke to my heart and said, hold up, you got this twisted. Uh, the church is mine. Church is mine, not yours. You're just the shepherd I place over it in human form, but the church belongs to me. If I want you to have it, I will pay for it. You worry too much. And when it's time for me to send you the people, I'll send them to you. And when, when we did get a small brick and mortar church, he did send them to me, praise God. But then there were some naysayers when I lost that place. And they said, he must have done something wrong in God's sight because God took his church from him. But what, what, what happened was they weren't around to see that during that time and for the next, oh, seven years, I would do more ministry as the house preacher in a funeral home, the funeral home chaplain, the head funeral home chaplain, the less. I met with families on Christmas Day and brought the word of God to them to console them. I preached God knows how many funerals. Gotta be three, four hundred. And you know, the way I know that is stuck is because when people come to you afterward, they remember what you said. God got it to them. I have had the greatest honor and joy of sitting in a funeral home and watch the mood flip upside down. They came in, they were crying and mourning. By the time they left, they hugging and being family again. I did more ministry after I left that, that house, went to that funeral home, starting 12 years ago, really, than I've done in my life. And now, we've expanded, and I made a decision recently. Um, one of the things that we did, starting out when we had our first church, amen, one of the things that we started out doing was what I call discipleship training. And discipleship training was going into unfamiliar places, uncomfortable places, and bring the word of God to people. Now I know some of you, some people have that idea that it's about street evangelism. I'm not talking about that. I had a more narrow beam. We had a local nursing home and all the new ministers and I, we would go there. And you know, visiting churches, a lot of the visiting churches would come in and they would go in the day room and have a service there and you would have to come make your way, it was five floors. You would have to make your way to the day room. They had elevator and everything. But let me tell you something. Yes, there were people that came down to that day room. But what about the people upstairs that really, they couldn't get on an elevator. I knew a woman had both her feet amputated and she just couldn't get around to climbing in, even getting dressed and climbing into that wheelchair and coming downstairs. She needed that ministry more than anybody else. So we went on the floors. We went on the floors to the people room by room by room and met them where they are as Jesus did. Yes. That's what you're supposed to do. It says you go the highways and the byways preaching the word of the Lord. Well, the highway is easy to find. What about that byway? And not only did we minister to the, to the impaired, 
but we ministered to the staff because they needed to because those spirits was around that nursing home rubbing off of those sick and infirm people onto the staff and then the staff carried home if they ain't prayed up. So we prayed with them to make sure that they was prayed up. Maybe once a week was better than none a week. I want to give you some scripture real quick. I want to give you some scripture from the utter wisdom. You know, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of wisdom. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. And I want to come to you right now from Proverbs chapter 11, amen. It's not going to be a big thing. We're going to hit it and quit it. But it's Proverbs chapter 11. And we're going to go verses 23 to 27. You all know I'm a New Testament guy. But Proverbs is in the Old Testament. And it's the same as it was before it is today. So just dig on this. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 23. Thus says the Lord. He says, The desire of the righteous is only good. But the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. The people will curse him who withholds grain, but blessings will be on the head of him who sells it. He who earnestly seeks good finds favor, but trouble will come to him who seeks evil. What I'm talking about is refreshment. For this ministry right now, this is a time of refreshment. Now, I know that a lot of you are used to going out in the street. You see the tents and the revival, the revival for five, six days. And a lot of these cats really got the meaning of revival twisted. Because revival is like a time of refreshment. The idea of revival is to revive the church, to revive the people, to refresh them, to reinvigorate them, to rededicate them to the Lord's service, amen. Unfortunately, many a church has used it as a money-making device. Oh, we'll, we'll bring this, you know, we'll get this preacher, that preacher, the other, they have a system. I will get five preachers for a bunch of denomination to come in and I don't have to pay them. I don't have to pay them. I don't have to, to, to take up an offer for them. You know, all the money gonna go to me. They're gonna help raise it. But then it goes around the circle because then I'm gonna have to go and I'm not gonna get paid and I'm gonna have to go to their church and do the same thing. All five of them. Come on, man. That's not what we're here for. That's not what we're here for. That's not what we're here for. As you know, and I, I spoke about this last week, this ministry, we do not tithe. I do not take a salary. I, you know, and I don't do it. I remember my daughter's mother used to say to me, do this and you'll get a blessing for it. I don't want to have that attitude of doing anything for the sole purpose of getting something for myself out of it. I do it because it's right. I do it because I enjoy doing it. I love preaching the gospel to the people. I love doing it. And that brings me to the point where I was telling you about the nursing home and so forth is I have decided that this ministry is going to be to remain at this time until God sees fit to change it. We are going to remain an internet only ministry. 
why do I say that? Well, first of all, um, in days of old, you had a lot of people, especially older folks, who couldn't get up and get dressed and go to church. They couldn't. So what they would do is on Sunday morning, they would turn on the TV and they would see guys like Dr. Price and Oral Roberts, Dr. Fred Price, or Apostle Fred Price, whatever you want to call him, Oral Roberts, Billy Graham, uh, uh, Reverend Ike, Joel Osteen got his start about 20 years ago, close to 20 years ago. Um, Joyce Meyer, Benny Hinn, they, they called them televangelists. The reason they called them televangelists was they were evangelists, they were going out and preaching the gospel to people in faraway places, but they were doing it through the television, through the use of the, the, the televised device. Well, now here we are some 40, 50 years later or so. And we have a different medium. We have Facebook, we have YouTube. We, we, we have the digital age upon us. And even if you miss me when I broadcast to you on a Sunday, you can still come back and find me and get this word that I have for you. You can be refreshed when you need it. And family, there are a lot of folks out there. You'd be surprised how many just simply cannot get out of bed, get dressed, and go to a church. You know, maybe They've been in churches before, brick, brick and mortars, and they've been hurt in the brick and mortar. And they don't want to go back. Maybe they've had more than one hurtful experience in a brick and mortar. In this room, they can stay kind of safe. There's a safety buffer to this. They can keep their anonymity and yet still get the word. There are a lot of folks that are elderly and infirm they can't do it and and they need the word you know it's the ones that are suffering that need it more there are people in jail a lot of the jails have cut back where they don't have christian services or, or whatever in the jails anymore they can't get a pastor to come and volunteer and and and, and preach the word or one that will be satisfied coming preaching the word to inmates. But we got this. We got this. And an inmate can come and turn us on when he gets some computer time in some of these places and get a word. See, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to do what's popular. I'm trying to do what's right here. And there is, outside of the mainstream, there is an audience. And because they have some kind of malady, they need this word more than anybody else. And I want to be there for them. God has placed me in a position to be there for them. You know, in a couple months, we're gonna redo the studio again right here we're going to redo the studio um, better camera and microphone setup better sound system better recording devices amen and, and we're really going to go full throttle um, come January we're going to put it together and come full throttle and this, this brings me back to the scripture like I said I don't get paid for doing this I don't get salary for this the equipment that we have here has come out of pocket. My pocket. My pocket. I don't get any help with this from people. Nor do I ask for it or demand it. I don't do any of that. But I will tell you this. God has always provided do you know that every 
Wednesday when we do Telebible School, which from my perspective um, here in, in Colorado in Mountain Time, it's 5 p.m. And um, around about 4, 4, 15, 4, 30, I get tired and it goes through my mind, man, I don't feel like doing this tonight. And I know that's the devil. If you ever sit around your house, you pick up a Bible, start to read it, in two minutes you start to feel tired. That's the devil. But see, what you have to understand is if you resist him, God will refresh you. He's telling you, listen to this again. He's telling us right in here. He said, he said, there is one who scatters yet increases more. When you put it out there to help somebody else, God is going to refresh you and give you your power back. And on top of just refreshing you, he's going to reward you. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, you must come to God believing that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How do you diligently seek him? You do your best to do what he says to do. Seek ye the kingdom and its righteousness first and all things will be given to you. That's uh, Hebrews, I'm sorry, that's Matthew 6 and 33. I'm a witness and can tell you in these two years that everything I poured into this ministry, I've gotten back tenfold. Now mind you, when it comes to material things, money, vehicles, clothing, I, I sat here the other day and thought about how much clothing that I have now that I had back when I had the brick and mortar church 12 years ago. How much furniture is here from that time? I have given away more than I'll ever get from men. Giving it away. Furniture, cars, clothes, food, money. Giving away more than I'll ever get from men. But I'm here to tell you that God has refreshed me at every single step every corner, every right angle, every left angle, at the end of the road and the beginning, God has refreshed and restored me, and we're going to be talking about that next week. He has refreshed and restored me every single time for everything that I put into this over the last two years to bring us back to have our Telebible school. We didn't have Zoom then. We, had, we, we didn't have Unlimited then. We, we didn't have the cameras then. We didn't have the recording ability then, but I put into it and God made it so. If you're willing to do the work, God is willing to bring everything else. But you got to be ready, willing, and available to him. And, and that's very good. You got to be available to him. Available. You know, I, I tell folks all the time, this is a staple, isn't it? This ministry ain't for everybody because we're into the truth here. I'm not gonna pat you on the back and call you a saint. When you already think you won, but you're still doing a lot of the stuff that you used to do. And most of us do till death. But some, some folks ain't trying. They just satisfied in their righteousness. I'm saved. Now I can do what I want to do. And I'm going to still get away with it. That's what you think. We're about humility here. Some of the hardest things, Elton John did a song 
back in the 70s, he said, sorry seems to be the hardest word. We can't apologize. We can't never say that we're wrong. We can't admit that we're evil and sinful. And to a broader extent, we're not perfect. We can't, we can't admit to that. But if you won't make it in the sight of God, Listen, how can you go to God who knows everything and say that I'm not perfect when you can't go to your own peers and admit it? We teach humility here. There's nothing wrong when you do a good job to feel pride and craftsmanship. Nothing wrong with it. That's pride and craftsmanship. A boastful, egotistical pride will be your downfall every time. And you can't get restored from that. But today we're talking refreshment. And I feel refreshed. And next week we're going to talk about being restored. You know, when you go to church and the preacher brings the message, you're supposed to pray restoration for all he's poured out. You're supposed to ask God because, let me tell you something, never are you more tired when you did his bidding and let him to use you. <laughs> I'm a witness. And we're going to pray restoration over this ministry in its newest, latest form. And I hope that you'll pray for me, that I be restored so I can go through another year of service to you. That's all I got for you today. I'm so glad that you thought it not robbery to come and sit spell and listen to this. Amen. As we have another discussion. Praise God. It's just such a humbling experience to be able to serve you one and all I mean that from the bottom of my heart but until we meet again I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce senior pastor and founder of All Christ Love Ministries thanking you for taking time to be with us here on the word from the pastor study until we meet again know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you and your families and be safe.